Triangle. Hey, BookTube. How's it going? Why am I way all, all over here? Um, because somebody doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> so, um, I'm making it to where somebody isn't on camera. Now, if you hear somebody rustling a Reese's packet, no, it isn't me. That's all I'll say. I had the stupid idea that if I did like three or four review videos real quick, it would free me up the rest of the week to do all sorts of other things. But what I didn't take into consideration is my lovely wife <laughs> and my freaking dogs. <laughs> So, this was a horrible idea. But, um, yes? What was that? Nothing. What did you say? I was just going to say there's not a lot of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, guys. Um, so, what I wanted to talk to you about, um, in... Lou, not in Lou, but in preparation for NaNoWriMo coming up, um, I'm going to be doing a uh, sword and sorcery um, novel. Um, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to read Hour of the Dragon again. <clears throat> um, the Robert E... I was going to ask you to un get the paper cups off this stuff before know. we started. I'm done. I'm so sorry. I need chocolate bag. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Hour of the Dragon. Um, I believe when the Lancer and Ace books popped up, um, DeCamp changed the name of it to Conan the Conqueror, I want to say. Um, I don't think I have it over there. No, I don't. Okay. Um, so what I have been listening to, and I have this, and I absolutely love it. Um, it's a pulp lip, pulp, oh, pulp lit production. It is Conan, the Sumerian Barbarian, the Complete Weird Tales Omnibus, edited and annotated and narrated by Finn J.D. John. Fucking hell, dude. Give me the longest title in the goddamn universe to try to say when I'm all tongue-tied. Okay. So anyway, this is a really good audiobook, and when I first got this, I think I did a video on it. Um, the annotations and the introductions that um, Finn J.D. John does are amazing. I think they're very good. I think they're very historically accurate, and um, even when... There are some things that might not, like no one really knows. He makes sure to let you know that no one really knows. Um, uh, he also did the three volume um, HP Lovecraft set that I got on Audible as well. Um, which I'll do another video on, because those are great as well. Um, if anyone has Audible, and you were getting the audiobooks of the Del Rey edition of... Um, oh, I can't remember what they're called. Like One's like the Bloody Sword of Conan, one's the Bloody Crown of Conan, blah, 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 blah. I wanted to get that first one because it had a couple of the stories that um, 
weren't published in Weird Tales. So because those weren't published in Weird Tales, those don't fall in public domain. And um, those were ones that were later rewritten by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter in the Lancer Ace editions. Um, but in those Del Rey editions, they have the original um, Robert E. Howard manuscripts. And they have e or not ebooks, audiobooks of those. And I would love to have audiobooks of those. But I ordered one a few months back. It was actually before we moved out here. And the chapters were all messed up. So like the first chapter would say chapter one, like on the contents and audible, but it would be like halfway through chapter 15. It was just like a train wreck. And I did all of the like, did you update your app? Did you turn it off and on again? Did you da 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 da? Did all that stuff. Talk to the um, people at Audible. They let me re-download it, and it was still jacked up. So I want to know when that gets fixed because I'm sure they're gonna fix it eventually. Like that's a pretty huge property to have such a huge screw up. Um, but I'm waiting to find out if that is good um, and all put together again before um, getting it again. So if any of you out there have it, please let me know if it's messed up for you or if it plays fine because I want to get that. Because like God in the Bowl, um, Veil of Lost Women, um, what was that other one? The Wolf something. Um, and then the Hall of the Dead, Hand of Negril, I think is the name. There's just all sorts of fragments and short stories that Weird Tales didn't publish. Um, because I think there's only 17 published Conan stories um, through Weird Tales. Um, actually, that's not true because they didn't do Frost Giant's Daughter. That was some other magazine. Okay, anyway, um, so back to Hour of the Dragon. Hour of the Dragon is a novel, a Conan novel, that was written for the European market um, and would be consumed by people who um, didn't have access to Weird Tales. So Howard took kind of like... And I say this very loosely. He took some of the coolest stuff from all the stories and kind of melded them together um, to make this novel. Now, I don't even think it's that bad. Some people are like, dude, he plagiarized himself. And I, I don't think he did. I don't think it's that... I just don't think he did. Um, I think there's so much in it that is different and exciting um, that it's an awesome standalone product, especially if you're wanting a novel. Now, Robert E. Howard only wrote four novels. And for me, I don't think his novel writing is as good as his um, short story writing. So that kind of drags for me a little bit. And even though the last chunk of the book, like the last battle, let's say, being told from the bad guy's point of view makes sense in the story because of um, how it plays out. It really bums me out in Conan Tales, especially when um, 
you either don't start off with Conan, which this doesn't start off with Conan, I don't think. No, it doesn't. Um, and so, as similarities go, this has a lot of the feel of Phoenix on the sword. Um, but I don't feel like it's plagiarized. If, or he plagiarized himself, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, but the thing that I feel like he lacks is that Conan is basically... They're going to do battle with these people that are trying to take over Aquilonia from him. Um, and he's pretty pissed about it. And then some spirit comes into his tent and makes it to where um, he should have died, but he didn't die. And it was um, just, uh, could, he was like paralyzed, couldn't move or whatever. <clears throat> so he didn't tell anybody, but he found somebody, like one of the guys in the army, had the same kind of shape as he did. So they put all of his armor on him and said, this is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to be. I need you to lead the army because if they know that I'm incapacitated, we've already lost kind of thing. <clears throat> so he goes out there and the army goes out and um, this sorcerer basically makes um, these mountains collapse on top of them. So the entire army's wiped out. And um, then we go on with this story of Conan being taken prisoner and then how he escapes, um, goes all across Hyboria um, to find out that the sorcerer, who's like 3,000 years old, um, he needs to find this ancient heart artifact jewel, um, the Heart of Aramon, I think is what it's called, in order to um, battle his magic. And he goes all over Hyboria. Like, we're talking, like, practically every single place that Howard ever wrote about is brought up in this. Um, but the problem is, besides the... I hate it when they don't start off on Conan. Um, is that... Somewhere around midpoint through the book, Conan just shows up at a place see somebody that he knows and we're supposed to just go, oh, he knows this guy or something like that. And some of them we knew beforehand, but um, for the most part, it's people we've never heard of before. And then this character will go on this big exposition dump of what's been happening since Conan hasn't been around the last few pages and why no one will listen to him, and how awful everything is, and how things are upsetting. And then Conan's like, well, screw that. I'm going to do what I want. I'm Conan. Blah. And then the people will either agree or disagree. But it's like, it's funny when you pick out something that's in a formulaic pulp story and have a problem with it being repeated. Because when he's like cleaving skulls and ripping out people's throats, like I could read that all day. Like I, I don't need that to change when he's um, drinking wine and throwing maidens around and wrestling monsters. Like I'm in, I'm cool. But, like, when, hey, let me tell you everything that's happened since you haven't been here. Blah, 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 page, 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 page after page of information. Um, that really bothers me for some reason. But it's funny, too, because I hate flashbacks. So, um, and I know flashbacks work in a lot of cases, and they're fine. But um, 
there are some people who just rely on it. Like, they're like, we're not going to tell you anything that's going on until we have to through flashback. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, well, that's just because you don't know how to tell a story and blah, 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 whatever. But anyway, so this bit always annoys me. And it's not that it's not interesting and it's not that it's not a good read. But when we get to this point where it's just like info dump after info dump and it's like, dude, how long have you freaking been gone that everything is different now? Like the whole world you knew is now a completely fucking different place. Like what the fuck? Um, It's really frustrating. But then again, um, it's great, and when he goes into Stygia, it just, like, cranks up to, like, a million, um, it's just so exciting, it's so good, um, I, I can't say enough about it if you haven't read it, um, if you haven't read the short stories, should you read those first? I would say yes, um, and don't start with Phoenix on the Sword or Scarlet Citadel. Like, start with, like, Frost Giant's Daughter or Tower of the Elephant. And read Phoenix on the Sword and Scarlet Citadel um, once you're done. Because basically, the, the I think the big gripe everyone has with Hour of the Dragon is that it's basically the Scarlet Citadel and Phoenix on the Sword... Um, with little sprinklings of everything else in it. Um, I think it's not quite, I, I'm probably being too kind, um, but I just love all of them. So it doesn't really bother me that much. But, um, then the last book or the last story, um, in the, Weird Tales omnibus that I have here. After Hour of the Dragon is Red Nails. And the way Hour of the Dragon ends, it's like so freaking like, oh, like this is so much fun. Everything amazing is happening. Blah. Like you don't want it to end. So going into Red Nails, which was the last um, story he wrote, and it's kind of a beefy one, um, is awesome. And it has Valeria in it from, for those of you who know the films or the new comics, the Age of Conan comics, Valeria of the Red Brotherhood. Um, And it is just epic. Like, basically, Conan's following this chick that he's known for a long time. Um, He's chasing her through the jungly woods um, because they're both on the run from something they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. There is monsters, like giant monsters, enormous creature thing coming after them. They get through that. It eats their horses and breaks all their bones. Like, just it, the description is so good. And they see um, a walled city in the distance. Um, they go there. They've never seen it before. Doesn't look like anyone's around. They enter it. It seems like it's a dead city, like that there's nobody there. Um, and then as you would imagine, bump, 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 all this other stuff happens. And, um, you just get some great stuff. So, um, Red Nails is definitely, um, an amazing one to look at. Um, And then when you, like, read, like, the last line, like, I know he didn't, like, write this um, and then kill himself the next day. Like, I understand time passes and all that other stuff. But when you read, like, the last... A lot of these Conan stories... In fact, Hour of the Dragon ends like this, too. It ends with Conan making some, like heroic or epic announcement and that sounds so dumb when i say it but it just works so good in the howard conan stories and at the end of red nails like you hear what conan's saying and then you know that just a while after this he kills himself robert e howard kills himself 
And it just really sucks, like, when you think of it like that. Um, so I just ruined that for you guys. I'm really sorry. Um, but it's just so, like, touching, yet, I don't know. It's just, um, it's just really good. So if you haven't read Red Nails yet, read Red Nails. Um, but yeah, I mean, there isn't a bad Conan story that Robert E. Howard wrote. In my opinion, there are some that are better than others, but none of them are bad. So you can't really go wrong. Um, some people will argue that if you pick up any of the Lancer Ace paperbacks or the Gnome Press hardcovers that have um, the El Sprague de Camp rewrites and Lynn Carter rewrites, that some of them um, are really just not as um, verbose in the um, action description. Um, whereas, like, the El Sprague de Camp, at least in my... This is my opinion here. The descriptive action that Robert E. Howard uses is short and curt and, like heavy like no punches are pulled when El Sprague de Camp fixes fixes what Robert E. Howard wrote um and a lot of and this is where you get into is El Sprague de Camp a dick I don't know El Sprague de Camp claimed Robert E. Howard was a hack and not very good at what he did I think so he can claim a place by saying Oh, yeah, he wasn't that good. But I could clean all this stuff up for you. And all I want is, like, part ownership of Robert E. Howard's Conan works. Oh, that's okay? Perfect. Yeah, let's do this. You know what? I'll even write a little bit about Robert E. Howard, about how he wasn't that good. Just so everyone out there knows that Robert E. Howard wasn't um, as good as I am. Is that, is that okay? Perfect. We could do that. So that's why I have a problem with El Sprague de Camp. But if El Sprague de Camp didn't do this, I don't know if anyone would even know who Conan is today. I think they would. I think August Derleth would have um, made sure of that if El Sprague de Camp hadn't have fooled around. But then we're into the H.P. Lovecraft, August Derleth muddied hole, just like we are with um, de Camp and Howard. So who knows? But anyway, so I feel like DeCamp's descriptions are more purple um, and flowery about things that aren't nearly as important as the action and um, stuff like that. And so, like, if he was going to describe um, this crocheted blanket, he would do a great job with it. But then if I tried to strangle him with this crocheted blanket, he wouldn't be able to write that very well. Whereas Howard would not be able to describe this blanket very well, but he would be able to write how I strangled him with this very well. Um, so there you go. That's my two cents. So just pick up some freaking Conan. Okay, bye.